So you've clicked on this video because you want to grow on social media and you wanna do it right now. You're in the right place because in this video, I am going to share five proven tactics that you can use to grow on any social media channel today. Obviously I can't promise immediate growth. However, I have tried these tactics myself. My clients have tried these tactics and they've seen some great results. So let's not dilly dally, let's get straight into the video. But before we do that, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because I upload new content just like this every single week. Okay, I'm just gonna dive right into the good stuff. The first tactic is called super short videos. Now, I hope you have a pencil and paper, pen and paper, just something to write down. <laughs> because I'm gonna go into detail with this one, right? So let's get ready. Essentially what this tactic involves is creating a short form vertical piece of content. So if you're on YouTube, that's a YouTube short. If you're on TikTok, it's just a TikTok. If you're on Instagram, it's an Instagram reel, for example. Creating this content in a very specific way that is designed to reach a lot of people. When you reach a lot of people with your social media content, you increase the chances of you growing. So how do we go about making this magical short form video that reaches a lot of people? Well, the first thing you wanna do is capture a video that features you doing something fairly monotonous. So is monotonous a word? Yes, it is a word. Also, how British did I sound when I just said that? Sometimes I just feel like I sound like a British child from like the 70s. Anyway, so film yourself doing something monotonous. For example, I often film myself whilst I'm working. So you can see me, but I'm not doing anything that's too wild or too distracting from the video. Another example is you walking towards the camera or walking away from the camera. You doing something which again, isn't too wild and distracting, but it does feature you and your face in it. The next thing you wanna do is you want to put some text over that video and ideally the text needs to be valuable in some way. Now, there are loads of different ways that you can provide value in your content, but for this tactic, you want the text to either be inspirational or educational. So think about your niche or think about your audience if you don't have a niche and think about what you could say to them that you know would resonate with them that is either inspirational or educational. Maybe it's a quote, maybe it's a story of a time where you overcame something challenging. Maybe you are teaching your audience how to achieve their goals. Just have a brainstorm about something valuable that you could say to your audience that you could write out over that video that we just selected. So now that you've got those two different elements, you've got the video and you've got the text, you wanna combine them together in whichever video editing application that you use. And you wanna make sure that the video is between five to seven seconds long, okay? The final step is to add some trending audio over it. So I don't know what platform you're necessarily on, but the beauty about this tactic is that you can add different songs depending on the platform that you're on. So let's say you created this video using a third party app like CapCut, or maybe you use one called InShot. There's a few different ones you can use. But let's say you created that video and you haven't quite added the music yet. You can upload that video to TikTok, to YouTube Shorts, to Instagram as a reel, and you can add whatever song is trending on that platform over that video. It really doesn't matter too much. If you can try and match the vibe, then go ahead and do so. But other than that, the main thing to be aware of is that you want the music to be trending, okay? So you want it to be popular on that platform. The end result will look something like this. And let me break down to you why this video is going to work. There's a few different reasons. The first reason is that you've overlaid some valuable text, which means your audience are likely to want to read it, right? It's gonna capture their attention. They're gonna to wanna to read it. There's a big chance that they might want to read it a couple of times to let the message truly sink in and so that they can absorb it. So the fact that this video is only five to seven seconds long means that they're gonna to have to rewatch the video a couple of times for them to truly soak up all the amazing value that you just shared. In addition to this, you've included a video that has your face in it, which means people who are familiar with you will stop scrolling because they've seen your face, but also people who aren't familiar with you are more likely to stop scrolling because there's a face on the screen. People are more likely to stop scrolling when they see a human and a face than they are to stop scrolling if they see like a view of something, right? If they actually see a face, they're more li likely to stop scrolling. So we've got them to stop scrolling. We've got them to rewatch the video a couple of times to read and soak up all your value. And we've got some trending audio over it, which basically means that the social platform you're on is more likely to push it out to more people. So because you've done all those things, the social media platform you're on, regardless of the one that you're on, is going to reward you for it. Because now you've created a short form piece of content that people are repeatedly watching. Therefore, that social platform is gonna push it out to more people. You're gonna reach more people and that is what's gonna help you grow. Sorry, I know that tactic is not for the faint hearted, but I wanted to start off strong. <laughs> okay, so the next tactic I am calling top five creators. What I want you to do for this tactic is to find five content creators who you really like. You want these content creators to have an audience who are similar to yours. So for me to do 
through this tactic, I would look for other creators who maybe are coaches or maybe they run social media agencies, that kind of thing. Because I know that their audience are likely to be interested in social media and the different things that I talk about on my channel. So you wanna try and find some creators who are similar to you in some way. Ideally, you wanna do this on Instagram. This is the platform where it works best on, right? What you then wanna do is head over to your stories and actually talk about the creators who you love. Ideally, you only want like one story per creator. So stories are up to 60 seconds long at the moment. So you don't really wanna be talking for more than 60 seconds about one creator. Ideally, you wanna aim for like the 30 second mark because otherwise people switch off. So you wanna create one 30 seconds-ish story where you are talking about this creator that you follow who you absolutely love and you wanna tag them in it, right? You want this to be a video where you're speaking to the camera. This is important. So you wanna do that for all five creators and you wanna tag them in each of the stories. The reason why I want you to do this is because there is a decent chance that one of those creators or more of those creators will see the lovely dedication that you've just shared of them and they will repost it onto their stories. Now, because you filmed yourself talking when you've been recommending this creator, when they repost that story to theirs, they're essentially showing you in your face and how you communicate to their entire audience. So now their audience gets a chance to see who you are, gets to know you a bit, and they're significantly more likely to go and follow you as a result. That is why it's important to actually show your face and like have a video of you talking, because if you just take like a random static photo and then recommend a creator, that's great. And they might still repost it, but the effects won't be as great because their audience didn't get to see your face or didn't get to see you talk. Okay, so quick question. How many of you guys are signed up to my newsletter? I don't know the answer because this is a camera, so I have no idea if you're nodding or not. If you've not signed up to my newsletter yet, I really recommend that you go ahead and do so. There is a link in the description. The reason why is because I'm rebranding it, I'm giving it a refresh, and it is getting a major, major upgrade. It's going to include things like creator Q&As, opportunities for content creators, whether that's jobs or brand partnerships opportunities, and of course, all of the recent news and updates that you need to know about the creator economy. So as I mentioned, obviously it's free to join and the link to join is in my description. All right, my next tactic is called the return factor. If you followed my first two tactics, you're likely to have a lot of new eyeballs on your social channels, which is great. The issue is though, not everyone is able to convert those new people into actual followers. You might start reaching loads of people with your short form content. Maybe a few creators have reposted your stories so now loads of people are aware of you, amazing. But how do we get them to actually stick around and follow or subscribe to you? How you do that is by giving them a reason to stick around. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do this tactic. The first way is by drafting a value statement. So this is essentially a phrase or a sentence where you are clearly stating why someone should follow you. It's like a clear statement of the value that you offer people. This doesn't have to be long or complicated. For example, my Instagram bio at the moment says, turn your influence to income. So I'm communicating to people that if they wanna learn how to turn their influence to income, they probably wanna follow my Instagram channel, right? I'm giving them a reason to follow. So think about what your value statement is, include that in your YouTube banner, your bio, whatever platform you're on, so that people are given a reason to stick around. The other thing that you can do is offer something exclusive. For example, going live. If you go live on a regular basis, or if you're considering going live on a regular basis, you need to make sure that you're telling new visitors this. These are the people who need to know more than anyone else, because if someone already follows you, they're probably going to see your story content. They're probably going to see you go live anyway. So when you follow someone on Instagram, for example, you get a notification saying they're going live anyway, right? So what we want to focus on is how do we make sure new visitors or new people know that we go live regularly? And the reason why this is important is because if someone is just browsing your page and they see that you go live every week, guess what? They're gonna want to subscribe to you or follow your channel because you're giving them a reason to stick around so that they can see your lives every week. So if you do go live on a regular basis or if you go live sporadically, I want you to talk about that in either your bio, your channel banner or whatever platform you're on. Think about what it is people see when they land on your channel and put it somewhere there so people can clearly see that you go live regularly. Final tip is one that works super well for Instagram but could work for other platforms too. And that is to offer some form of exclusive content on your stories. Now I say this could work for other platforms because some platforms do have stories like YouTube has stories, TikTok has stories, but they're not widely used yet. So this does work best on a platform like Instagram. But have you ever gone on someone's Instagram channel before and in their bio, it says something like real life in my stories, right? Now, whether or not they know how tactical that is, like some people might just be genuinely like I do to share my real life in my stories. Other people might be being really tactical. Regardless of why they're putting that in their bio, it's very clever because now you're saying to someone, if you 
want to see my real life, you need to look at my stories. If someone wants to watch your stories, they're going to follow you because that's going to make it a lot easier for them to regularly watch your stories. So all three tactics kind of work in similar ways. You're giving people a reason to stick around. Okay, so my next tip is going, I don't know if it's going to ruffle some feathers, but I feel like there'll be people watching this who feel slightly attacked. So if that's you, I apologize. <laughs> the next tactic is to repel people from your content. So you actually want to repel them and not necessarily attract them. Let me explain. A lot of people watching this video right now, talking to you, you might be trying so hard to attract people to your social media channels that you're actually trying to appeal to everyone. And as a result, you're diluting your content. Let me paint a picture for you. Let's say you're a high fashion content creator, right? You love high-end brands. You love to dress really edgy, right? That's the natural style and type of clothing that you love. However, over time, you've realized that actually you want to reach as many people as possible and you really want to grow and give yourself the best opportunity to grow your audience. So in order for you to do that, you think, okay, I need to appeal to more people. Not everyone loves high fashion. Not everyone can afford high fashion. Not everyone finds high fashion aspirational. So instead you dilute your content and you become very generic and vague. So there you are with your vague generic content. Let's say someone is browsing Instagram. They come across your channel and this person is super into high fashion. They are like, oh, love it all about the designer brands and they just love high fashion content creators. They're going to see your content and they're going to be like, it's not for me because you've diluted it so much that it's for everyone, which basically means it's for no one, right? And the same thing goes for someone else who isn't into high fashion. So you diluted your brand because you thought, let me appeal to everyone. So let's say we've got someone else who's really into fast fashion who comes along and is browsing your channel. Guess what? They also don't want to follow you now because your content isn't really for them either. It's still for everyone. So they're going to look and think, oh, okay, well, they're not really into what I'm into. So I'm going to keep it moving. This is what happens every single day. Every single day this happens because we are not being specific enough with the audience we're trying to attract. If we are super specific with who we're trying to attract, we will end up repelling people. And that is a good thing. If we use that same example, what we want to happen is that the high fashion creator is producing high fashion content, which means the high fashion viewer sees it and is like, love it, gonna follow or subscribe. And it also means that the fast fashion viewer sees it and thinks not for me right? So they've repelled the fast fashion person, but they've attracted the high fashion person. That is so much better than just not resonating with either of them. Okay. So sometimes repelling people and creating content that, you know, some people are going to be like, oh, this is annoying or this isn't for me. Sometimes doing that is the right thing to do. Please note, I hate that I have to caveat these things because I know you guys don't need these caveats, but I still have to say it. Obviously I am not talking about repelling people by being offensive in some way or spreading absolute nonsense online. I do not condone that. That is not what this strategy is. Is about. I know you guys know that anyway, but I just feel like I got to cover my back. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, this is an old school tactic. And by old school, I mean like, you know, two years old because that's old in the world of social media, but it still works. And this tactic is to partner up. So what I'm referring to here is when you partner up with another creator or with a brand and you create content, which is viewed by both of your audiences. By doing this, you are able to get exposure to your partner's audience and your partner is able to get exposure to your audience. Now, when you partner up with people who have similar audiences to you, this could unlock some serious growth. So let's talk about a few different ways that you can do this. First way and most common and also easiest way is to go live. Go live with someone else or multiple people. You can go live with up to three other people. Go live with other people because when you do that, their audiences will join the live and it will give you an opportunity to speak to that audience, but it also gives that audience an opportunity to fall in love with you, which I'm sure they will. Another option is to co-create content. A lot harder to do from like a operational perspective because maybe you're not, you don't live near them. Maybe you've got to do it virtually. Still possible though. And when you co-create content, especially on a platform like Instagram, you can actually upload the post onto both channels simultaneously, which is amazing when it comes to the exposure that both channels will get as a result. You can also do interviews or you can agree to promote each other's content. Like if you know someone within your industry and you are friends or you have a relationship, you could just say, hey, on your, our next YouTube video, should we both just do a shout out to each other and just say, hey guys, if you love my content, you would also love so-and-so's content, right? Beautiful way to collaborate with someone else. 
Another way is to get brand exposure. So please exercise caution when it comes to this tip. But essentially what you could do, especially if you're in the fashion niche, you could create some content where it features a brand, send it to that brand and ask them to repost it. A lot of brands have a big following. So this could get you a lot of reach and it could massively help you grow. When I say exercise caution, we don't really want to get in the habit of just providing content for free for brands. That's not something that I want everyone to start doing. But every now and again, that tactic does work. I've actually had that work on an old account for me on several occasions. Last thing that you can consider doing is a good old theme page. Who remembers theme pages? Anyone? Theme pages are essentially pages which focus on curating other people's content. So the creator doesn't create their own content, they curate content. They get content from other people and they share it. And it's normally under one central theme, for example, puppies. So if there's a puppy theme page, their job is to get the best puppy videos or content and share it to their audience who love puppies. If you get featured on one of these theme pages, you can unlock a lot of growth. And the reason why is because some of these theme pages have a huge audience. A lot of the time they're pretty engaged because they're all interested in the same thing. And if what they're interested in aligns with you as a creator, there's a big chance they'll follow you as a result. Another example, my old page I used to have had a lot of travel content in it. Which we would get featured on travel pages and that would massively help us grow. Okay guys, those are all my hacks and my strategies and my tactics. I'm really proud of them. So I hope you found them useful. If you did, please let me know in the comments so I know to continue to create content just like this. If you feel like hanging around, I recommend watching this video. It's all about my top tips for being organized as a content creator. Thank you so much for watching as always. Can't wait to see you in my next video.